Hello everyone, my name is Bree and welcome to Documented Journey. Today's video is going to be all about my sketchbook. <laughs> uh, I'm going to first start off by saying this is a new sketchbook. This is by Dingbat. Um, Dingbat Journals is something that I accompany that I have loved for a while now. They, they are just amazing. They are green, so they have no nasty stuff in their notebooks. They also have pens and even the water that they use to produce the paper or any product is returned to the water source rivers cleaner than when it was taken out. They use biodegradable and recyclable materials. They are FSC certified paper and the dingbats are biosafe because we enjoy being part of nature and that is what their little mission statement says. I just really like their company and so I wanted to see if I would enjoy them as a sketchbook because I do have many sketchbooks as we all know but the paper is more on the thicker side and I, I just really love a 90 weight or a thinner weight paper. Uh, it's just a personal preference. I love the crinkle of Tomo River, uh, and I wanted to see if this was at all similar because it does have a coating on it. And the the difference or the reason why I like the coated paper over the thicker paper is because my ballpoint pen glides across the paper really smooth. And I love how that feels as opposed to drawing on maybe a watercolor paper or something like a mixed media paper where my ballpoint pen sinks into the page, literally creates divots along with its mark. But I just prefer the coated papers. That's a personal preference. I know it's kind of a controversy, especially in the journaling community because coated paper can also produce smearing. However, when you're using a ballpoint pen, because it is oil-based, uh, it's archivable, it's all that kind of stuff. It does not smear on the page. Uh, a gel pen would. Uh, I do know that the Uni Jetstream ink, which is their hybrid of a ballpoint and a gel, that does not smear at all. And that is one of my favorite journaling pens. So honestly, this notebook and the paper that Dingbats creates for their journals is amazing for me. As most of you probably already know, Tomo River paper is no more, so I am looking for something to replace those notebooks. And I really think I found it here. I have the deer cover. It is part of the wildlife collection. It is made with vegan leather. It has rounded corners. It has 100% GSM coated cream acid-free paper, so this paper would be really great for fountain pens. It has 192 pages, and they are micro perforated. And what that means is they're perforated, but they are so smallly perforated that no page has fallen out of this notebook. When I even paint over the perforations, they're not like enhanced at all by any means. I was kind of worried about this. So I really kind of applied some water to the uh, inside of the notebook and just trying to see if it would enhance it and it doesn't. So I'm really thankful for that. It does have a closure and a bookmark. And I'm really, really happy with this. And 
it does kind of crinkle a little, but not too much. It really reminds me of the artist grade tome over paper. So uh, I'm really happy with this situation. Now, they do have a couple other notebooks. They have an Earth Collection, which pretty much is like a bullet journal style. So it has like bullet journal pages, like it has an index. All the page numbers are labeled. Um, in this one that I have, it doesn't have any of that. And then they also have a Pro Collection, which is just a B5 notebook. And you can get them you know, the same as everything else. You can get them with dot grid, plain, and lined. And the Pro Collection does come with 160 GSM matte white paper. I am not as fond of white paper as I am cream, but I wouldn't mind giving that one a go to. I just really like the company and I think that this could be a all around go-to notebook for me, not only for my journaling, but also for my sketching. So as I applied paint, I noticed a few things. The paper does crinkle, that does not bother me, uh, but I can see why some people don't like it. And I also noticed that once you apply the color, if it dries, you can't really move it around. Now on Tomo River paper, you could. Um, I won't say you cannot at all on this paper, but it doesn't have as big maybe of a coating or as thick of a coating as Tomo River paper, so you don't get to move it around as much. It kind of reminds me of the old, like I'm talking about like 10 years ago, if you all were journaling then, of the old moleskin paper, which I absolutely love for watercolor. So again, I love that watercolor could go on top of this. It does not bother me that the page crinkles at all. Once you close the book, Pretty much with, even if you do this with um, Tomo River paper, any kind of thinner paper, if you close the book and you put the band on it or you put something heavy on the book to keep it closed, the page will flatten out eventually. Not 100% flat, but it does get flat. So that way, when I go to flip this next page and paint on the next page, the crinkle from this painting won't really affect the next painting because the paper will have already flattened out in the notebook as it just sat there waiting for me to use it for the next time. The last test that I wanted to do with this notebook or with this paper is how well it layers because each layer affects the page in a way because you're adding more water each time and 
how well this paper holds up to all those layers. And I think it did a pretty good job. I was a little nervous at times just trying to get it to blend after the fact, but I feel like I cannot really complain about it. I think that it did a great job. Uh, I do uh, I do use a heavy amount of water. That's just kind of naturally how I am. And I do about three, four layers for each area. Uh, and I think it did really well. I would totally recommend this notebook for anyone that loves to do some kind of watercolor, maybe even a sketch your day type situation, or just like me. I just like to sketch with my ballpoint pen and add some watercolor. I don't know how this would hold up to anything else, but the way I see it is if it can hold up to all the water that I'm throwing at it, I'm sure it could hold up to some glued paper or some acrylic paint or gouache even for that matter. Um, I feel like watercolor is the ultimate test because of how much water you're applying to the page. So I'm curious, have you ever tried Dingbat's notebooks? Do you have a go-to notebook that you really enjoy? Leave all those answers in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video and the little review. And until next time, I'll see ya.